Now, speaking about entrepreneurship, because we could talk about this off the show, because I have so much to say about environmental injustice. Like, I went to Tuskegee and did a whole bunch of research on it. <laughs> we could go off the show and discuss. But I want to start gearing towards entrepreneurship now. Yes, and what you mentioned, uh, having a seat at the table or creating your own table, how can people start that process who came from literally nothing? I feel like that's one of the main issues with entrepreneurship. A lot of people, it's, it's hard work. It's hard work. Don't yeah. get me wrong. But a lot of people think that it's not possible because of where they're at or where they're starting at. So what are your opinions about that? Absolutely. Well, I, I think the starting point is, is, is that all of us um, have to, um, to rekindle the ability to dream, the, the ability to dream. And we need to become dream catchers, right? You know, we did some work for the uh, uh, Lakota uh, uh, Native American Reservation many, many years ago. And I became very close friends with the local chief there. And he talked about this, they have this, this spiritual philosophy called dream catching, right? And, and so it, it's, it's the idea that, is that, that my current environment may not be what I want it to be, and it may not be optimal, it may not be the best, but if I can just dream of what could be, right? And then that dream can take on reality. It takes on a whole level of energy, you know, by itself. I mean, I look at my situation, man. Um, my mother was a janitor in the school system in Baltimore City. My dad was a laborer. Um, we didn't have any entrepreneurs in my, in my family, but what mom and daddy did where, where they were very intentional about exposing us to entrepreneurs. So in my neighborhood, we had a shopping center. It's called Cherry Hill Shopping Center. And at the time, it was it, the, 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 the entrepreneurs were all white. You know, the, the food store, the cleaners, the, the, the clothing store, the, the owners were white. But mom and daddy would take me into the store and they would say, look at the people behind the counter, right? And look at how they live. Look at how the cars they drive and all that. He said, now, now one day, one day, you want to be the guy behind the counter, right? Selling stuff. And so they planted the seed. And so what we what we need to do, man, we need to plant the seed and then and then really encourage our people, our young people especially, to dream. To dream, you got to be exposed to people who catch dreams. And they are the entrepreneurs of any color, of any background. I will tell you, my mentors I've had over the years in terms of be, you know, being an entrepreneur have come in all shapes and colors and sizes. So don't be restricted to, to think that only African-American entrepreneurs can, can help you dream. That's not true. You, you can start there, but there are men and women of all colors and backgrounds who are interested in, in, in helping people who have great goodwill to help change our nation. And we need, we need to see, seek out those people and to, and to listen to them. All right, take the advice. Now, how did you get started with your entrepreneurship ventures? Because I know you have a mechanical engineering degree from University of Pennsylvania, right? That's correct. That's correct. And so how did you go from mechanical engineering to having eight books and <laughs> owning all of these companies and just being a boss? How did you start? <laughs> well, well, you know, I, I tell you, I have been blessed with um, great mentors. And um, there's, a, there's a special high school in Baltimore City. It's called Baltimore Polytech, Polytechnic Institute, BPI. It is a school that was designed for, for, for kids. It started with boys, all boys, but now it's co-ed. It's mostly, mostly sisters, quite frankly, which is very nice. But it's a school that focuses on training kids who are gifted in math and science. And so as a kid, I was always gifted in math and science. I always, probably like you, ma'am, I was always a good student, right? I always got A's. I just, yes. you know, God blessed me that way. And mom, mom and daddy made sure we took school seriously right. and I always got A's. And so I was, I was directed to this special school that targeted kids who were gifted in math and science. And so it was, it was at that school that I was mentored by two men. And I mentioned to you earlier about your mentors could come in different sizes, shapes and colors. These two men, I'll never forget it, Mr. Knighting, uh, who was Polish-American, and Mr. Sanford, who was Jewish-American. And they took me aside one day and they said, Wallace, 
we think that you are capable and able, number one, to go to an Ivy League school to study engineering, and then at some point down the road, maybe maybe become such your own business. So these two men planted the seed in my young mind at that I was like 15 years old. They planted the seed and then they nurtured the seed my, in my remaining years in high school that led me to University of Pennsylvania to study engineering. The truth be told, before I got to poly, I had no idea what engineering was. But these men, in this case, it was men. Um, they took me, took me under their wings and they saw something in me, whatever it was, I don't know, but I'm glad they did. And, and they helped me. They helped me to see a future that I had never seen before. And I'm grateful to these men. They both passed away now. This is years ago. But there's so many people like that in my life I could share with you, ma'am, that, that mentored me and gave me the path to follow. And I followed the path.